Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Few things are a bigger threat to troops on the ground than aerial vehicles. After all, in battle, having the high ground matters. That's why it has always been imperative for ground troops to be able to defend against aerial vehicles like planes, helicopters, and now drones. In fact, the US Marines take these threats so seriously that it has designated battalions responsible for protecting against them. They are known as the Low Altitude Air Defense, or LAD. These men and women are equipped with a variety of weapon systems, including FIM-92 Stinger missiles, which they use to engage and destroy low-flying enemy aircraft while providing defense for high-value assets and personnel. In the past decade, defending against drones has become a significant priority for LAD. Of course, there are also attack drones capable of stealthily flying in and out of a given area and releasing bombs or missiles on unsuspecting targets. Modern surveillance drones are small, fast, hard to detect, and even harder to disable with traditional weapons. For years, the primary method of defending against such threats has been manned portable air defense systems like the FIM-92 Stinger. The Stinger is a shoulder-mounted missile system first introduced in 1967. It uses infrared homing technology to target and destroy low-flying aircraft, including unmanned aerial vehicles. Nowadays, LAD teams will practice firing their Stinger missiles at target drones flown by their compatriots. Doing this successfully requires multiple individuals to work together, with one acting as a spotter and the other firing the actual weapon. The Stinger missile moves roughly 2,400 feet per second, or Mach 2.2, This allows it to pursue even the fastest moving targets and strike them with deadly accuracy. In training drills, the missiles will typically not have a warhead attached, simply to ensure the safety of the trainees and any civilians that may be within range, which is roughly five miles.
my In response to the growing drone threat, LAD units have begun testing compact laser weapon systems, or CLAWS, alongside traditional air defense weapons. These directed energy weapons use a powerful laser to heat and destroy the target rapidly. Also, unlike missiles or guns, energy weapons have a much lower cost per shot, but can also engage various targets simultaneously. In order to maximize effectiveness in the field, each unit is designed to be modular and scalable depending on the specific application. The United States is far from the only country looking to improve its ground-based air defense systems. Countries like the Netherlands, Norway, and Germany all take aerial threats very seriously and have developed various missile and laser systems to defend against potential attacks or the unwanted invasion of their airspace. As unmanned aerial vehicles are often used for spying and other forms of surveillance, they can typically be shot down without loss of life or leading to an international incident. Poland is one nation that has had to maintain a high level of defense for centuries. One of its largest defense companies is Zaklady Mechaniczny Tarnow, or ZMT. Zaklady specializes in the production of military and civilian firearms, as well as various mechanical and electronic components. After Poland joined NATO, ZMT expanded its operations beyond firearms production to manufacturing multiple mechanical and electronic components, including many that are now used in state-of-the-art robotics, drones, and defense systems. One of ZMT's most recent developments is a counter UAV system that is part radar system, part heavy machine gun. The multi-mission hemispheric radar can locate many unmanned aerial vehicles at distances of 10 kilometers. The gun itself fires 12.7 millimeter rounds via a multi-barrel rotating cannon. The rate of fire is so high that even the smallest drones can be completely destroyed after a single volley. Perhaps most impressive of all is the fact that the system can be operated manually or fully automated, providing a reliable layer of defense even when nobody is there to fire it. Across the border in Germany, automotive and weapons manufacturer Rheinmetall AG has its own approach to dealing with UAVs. They call it the Skynex truck. The Skynex boasts a combination of electro-optical and radar sensors that powers a 35mm revolver cannon 
and an advanced guided missiles launcher. Tests reveal just how fast and accurate this combination can be against not just one drone, but an entire swarm of them. In less than a second, the truck can target, fire, and destroy all eight drones from thousands of feet away. Also, like the ZMT machine gun, the Skynex can be automated or operated manually. Rheinmetall is working on increasing the range of its weapons and ammunition to help prevent UAVs and other vehicles from penetrating friendly airspace. As a world leader in developing artillery and mortars, they have set several records for accuracy and distance. Thanks to Rheinmetall's state-of-the-art production facility, their next generation of ammunition could travel even further. Not all drones and remote-controlled aircraft represent a threat. In fact, this technology has actually proven quite helpful when training combat troops and pilots. Perhaps the best example of this is the United States military's QF program. This initiative converts retired fighter jets like the F-4 Phantom II and F-16 Fighting Falcon into unmanned drones. These drones, designated as QF-4 and QF-16, can then be used as aerial targets for training exercises. As realism always provides the best quality training, pilots will get a chance to engage real, life-size planes in actual flight situations instead of simulated environments. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 was the first plane to enter the QF program. An extremely capable fighter, the F-4 was introduced in 1961 and saw extensive use throughout the Vietnam and Korean Wars. Despite its large size, the plane is very maneuverable and can reach speeds of more than 1,400 miles per hour. These features, alongside the fact that F-4s are no longer reliable against modern enemy fighter jets, made it the perfect candidate for unmanned conversion. However, now that the F-16 Fighting Falcon is beginning to age out of service, it too is starting to be used for the QF program. Though it may seem disrespectful to have these planes destroyed in such a manner, advocates of the QF program feel that the experience pilots get facing real aircraft in the sky far outweighs any benefits the planes might have as museum pieces or restorations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.